So hello, museum families, and welcome to RBCM at Home Kids, a play date through screens across British Columbia and the world. The previous sessions are recorded, and you can find them on our Royal BC Museum YouTube page. Um, a security guard is coming through right now, so you might hear some, um, some uh, walking past. So um, my name is Chris O'Connor, and I'm a learning program developer at the Royal BC Museum. The museum and my home is on the territory of the Lekwungen speaking people, the Songhees and Esquimalt nations here in Victoria on Vancouver Island. I'm an uninvited guest on this territory and grateful to live, learn, and raise a family on this land. So today I'm wearing red and you might see red things more in your neighborhood or in your town over this coming week, because on Friday, it's Lunar New Year, a really important time to celebrate for families and communities of Chinese heritage all throughout the world, including here in BC. Lunar New Year is sometimes called Chinese New Year or a spring festival. And though it starts on Friday, it goes for quite a few days after. And we'll learn all about that with our with two of my favorite people in the whole world. <laughs> um, first up, I want to introduce you to Maya Louie, um, who just waved. Maya is a learning team volunteer here at the museum, at the Royal BC, Royal BC Museum. And Maya, you've been a volunteer at the museum for I think probably like five years or so, right? Yeah. Um, and then we have uh, Dr. Tsui Chang, is a curator of history here at the Royal BC Museum. And I was going to say, actually, Maya and Sui, that you're the first um, mother-child duo for um, RBCM at Home Kids, but you're actually the second, because Genevieve Weber, BC archivist, and Genevieve's son, Ray, were part of a, a, a program a few months ago. So, um, but you are the second. Um, and we're so glad that you're here. So welcome, you two. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> and um, and partly, I wanted to do this program with with both of you, and I'm really glad because it's, it's because your mother and daughter, um, and L Lunar New Year is so much about family. Um, so I'm really glad that you're both doing this together. Um, but for so for visitors that are, or participants that are listening in right now that are not so sure what Lunar New Year is. Maya, can you give us a little bit of a rundown on what, what is Lunar New Year? Well, Lunar New Year is a time to celebrate the new year and to, well, it's to celebrate a new year and to welcome in the good luck for the, New Year to come. Mm -hmm. And why is it called, why is it a lunar new year? Because it follows the lunar cycle instead of the year cycle that the rest of the world uses. It follows the lunar cycle. I'm not quite familiar with it, but hmm. it I'm pretty sure it follows the stars. The Chinese society was um, built on the agriculture uh, as its um, foundation. So um, it always followed the lunar calendar until uh, you know the last century, and uh, the lunar calendar is followed by not just Chinese but some a, a lot of different cultures in the world. Mm -hmm. And um, this is um, basically Friday will be the first day of the first month of the lunar on the lunar calendar. Mm. And because it's the lunar calendar, then the beginning of it is is different each year, a little a little bit different each year, right? Completely, yes. Yeah. So, um, so what are some what are some ways of celebrating uh, Lunar New Year? Well, we have a lot of food, and uh -huh. usually, a few days before Lunar New Year starts, we clean out the house. Um, you know, to it's like a spring clean <laughs> and to welcome in the good luck. We can't clean during Lunar New Year because that could be like sweeping out the good luck. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And so my, you said food. 
So what 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 kind of, and my ears per, perked up. So what what do you what kind of food are there specific foods that are that you would that people would only eat during this time of the year or particular? Well, yeah. The um there's many different kind of foods. We usually eat um fish because that's a sign of good luck or fish is um the 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 Chinese character of fish uh, is the same is pronounced um, as the word uh, surplus. So the word, the idea is that you have to have a full fish on the table for Chinese New Year's Eve, and then you cannot finish it, so that you always have surplus for the rest of the year. You said full fish, so like. Whole fish, yeah, oh, the whole, whole fish. the whole fish. The you whole have to have fish. the head, you have to have the tail, the body, uh -huh. eyes, everything. Uh huh. So it's about like abundance and also like using everything and. Yeah, surpluses, and then there's also the va the the fruit of oranges and apples because they are um, pronounced in the same way as safety and. Uh, Good luck again. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, and red is really important for good luck, right? Can you talk a little bit more about that? Why is, why is the color red? Do you want to tell that story? No, you tell it. It's a long story, <laughs> but um, basically uh, the word ear in Chinese was originally by the legend a beast that only has one, it's like a unicorn beast, but like, pretty big beast that uh, sleeps for 365 days per year and wakes up at the end of that cycle and then eat up people from the bottom of the ocean. It uh, come out and then flooded everything and then eat every single living being it can find on the land. And then the only way they figure out what, um, to scare this off was, was uh, firecrackers that are red and a red clothes, red, 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 um, um, decorations and um, um, basically um, just red scares it. Kind of like, I don't know, the idea of um, 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 just warding off the, 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 the demons and um, the evil spirits and whatever was scary from that last year. And some people might be familiar with going, like especially here in Victoria, going to the, going to Chinatown and seeing the, the parade and especially the lion dance, and the firecracker. So that's connected. That is that correct? That's yeah. But also, just to uh, welcome the spring, the lions come out and um, they get fed on um, green cabbages. Um, if you have ever gone to those parades and you'll see that's how they did it. And um, so there's a lot of symbols of um, the transition from the, the the very, very cold winter into spring, the beginning of the spring. Okay, great. And then one of the, um, so one of the things is cutting paper, right? And creating sort of decorations to put up around. I was showing from the one that you gave me in my window, there's a couple more behind me here, and then right behind you, see, I see there's one up on your wall. Yeah, that's um, just to show that it can get up there. Yeah. So, but and the part of the idea is that what we do today then really encourage people to put it up so that people can see in their neighborhood. And uh, the window, yeah, it's called okay. window flower when you're done. So all you need again is just red paper and scissors. And uh, yeah, let's let's get into it. I'm, I'm looking uh, Before we do that, yeah. Chris, are you gonna acknowledge our sponsor? Because- um, Oh yeah. It's, it has to be a special kind of wrap paper when you go for like um, usual wrap paper layer um, on the thin side, uh, on, the, on the thick side. And then we had to go into Chinatown to get, um, get a special paper for Chinese um, couplets, rows, and so these are for Chinese calligraphy and for this type of work. So the, it's pretty fancy paper, and then we got their last roll. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> so this is um, like we like to support we like to support um, 
local businesses here in Victoria. Um, and this is a local business who was so kind to, to give, give us some of this paper. Um, so we wanted to acknowledge, um, uh, acknowledge that, that, that person and that uh, business. Do you want to say the, the name of the? David Yuan. Mm -hmm. And what about the, the store name? It's right next to Dragon Alley on Fiskard. Yeah. Um, I, I have to pull up the, the name of it again, but I, I will pull that up to, to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, please support Chinatown businesses yeah, during this time. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're going to go into the, um, the activity now. Mm -hmm. All right, so take it away. So you start out with a square piece of red paper. It should be perfectly square, like so. And fold it lengthwise so that opens up. And if you want to, you can use a pe pencil to mark this, the dot right in the center before you fold it again into a slow square. Then you turn it diamond side. The open, the top has to be the one that opens up. And you fold again, like so. So now you have a sideways triangle and the dot should still be at the bottom. So Maya, I'm just, Maya, I'm just gonna suggest if you can start from the beginning again. Oh, um, sure. Because sometimes it's, sometimes when you're looking on the screen, it's, it could be hard to follow um, when, we're, when we've done paper things before. So um, you, just a reminder, you start with um, a square, right? Yes, you start with a square and you fold it in half so that you can open it up like this. And then you fold again. At this point, if you want to, you can mark the middle, this part, just to keep track of where it is. And later we'll fold on it, obviously. Before we fold it again into a square. Now we turn it down. The dot that if you want to mark it should be at this side, but it should also be openable from the top before you fold it again. So now you have a sideways triangle. And again, this part should be openable if you want to. Before you fold again, you bring this side over to the long flat side. So if you have thick paper, it's rather harder to cut, but thin paper helps. And also bigger pieces of paper will be easier to cut into. And Maya, now you have... um, Maya, sorry, we just uh, had a comment on, on Facebook just to <laughs> slow down just a little bit. Oh, <laughs> bad. We appreciate your, um, your enthusiasm. And, um, but so if you could just, just if maybe do that one more time, and especially that last move. Um, so you can go through the steps just one more time. Okay, so once you have a square like so, if you drew a dot here, the it should be pointing down and you should be able to open the top. From here, you fold again. So now that you have a sideways paper triangle. You should still be able to open a bit on the top. And your dot is right here. So you're taking this side and you fold it towards the middle. Like so. Okay, thank you. So now that you have a triangle, like so, you can start cutting. This will be more freestyle, so you can cut any shapes that you want into this. But it's if you want a more delicate one or a more detailed one, you should cut more shapes into it. 
don't, don't. And it can end up like this. How you, you have to show how you can draw on this to show what we should cut. If you want to, you can draw on draw shapes of like what you would like to cut onto it. Okay, so for rounded you, corners, yeah, you, you can curve the top and cut off the top part. But if you want more sharp like corners, this. like so, you can just leave it be. Okay, so if you want rounded edges, then we do this and cut it out. So on either side, you can just start cutting, but um, keep in mind, um, just you can do anything you want, just don't cut through. So I'm gonna show you a few possibilities here. So for example, because it's gonna be Valentine's Day, you can do a heart, but only half of it. Let me see. So you can, yeah, can you show that a little closer? <laughs> yeah, so you can do half a heart here, and then depend on depending on what kind of um, shape you like. I'm just gonna heart is not very easy to cut when you have like many layers, but you can try. And then you can just do whatever shape. So we're just gonna go freestyle here, like Maya said. Do this, and it can be any shape you like and just remember the more the more um shapes you have the more you cut out the pattern will be more intricate and just a reminder not to cut all the way through is that never cut all the way through otherwise they fall into pieces <laughs> And uh, just have a couple comments on Facebook Live. So Ruti says that Maya, you're a pro. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Which I agree. And uh, Charlene says, love this. Thanks, lovely Charlene. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Who did, uh, Charlene did an amazing job with RBCM at Home uh, last week. Yeah, with, please uh, check it yeah, out. So, and that's that's recorded, so you can go back and and watch watch that too. So I'm starting to cut whatever is there, and Maya's doing Maya's doing the same thing. So whatever I uh, whatever I have on here, I'm just gonna cut from the the edges. And while there are some designs uh, that you could make, it's also like you can't make any mistakes, right? Because however people do it is is great. Yes, and just make sure that you don't cut through, <laughs> otherwise you lose it. We have see like before we get the red paper, like we did a lot of practices, and then when you cut too much. You get those. <laughs> Which are kind of interesting. <laughs> kind of look like fish bones. <laughs> this one. And then, but you can also see it as a snowflake. This is Maya's work practice. <laughs> and then they come in all different sizes in the pieces. So however small or big, big your paper is, what you do is you just, whatever pattern you can just add on to, and then you'll get there. That's really nice, Maya, at the top of yours. Yeah, this kind of pattern will end up looking a bit like the top right here. Oh yeah, you can see. right. But it's important to remember that the more you cut, the more fragile it gets. So when opening it, you have to be very careful. Okay. 
so the real um, professional scissors for um, Chinese classical art of paper cutting are the small kind with very sharp um, edges um, at the top. I didn't get those because I didn't think that we would go that professional. <laughs> We're just doing this in our in our like spare time. But these are um, easy, but you'll see when you're done, they will look good, hopefully. And it's a little like a mystery too, in terms of like not knowing exactly what it's gonna look like. Uh, every single one will look different, that's mm -hmm. for sure. And I really like the fact that you had, you tried so many of them. So you really like just experimenting with different ideas and just sort of just going for it. We were just never really good with craft. So if we can do it, you can do it. <laughs> and then because it was going to get recorded, so we, we, we did some practice. So you can see how I um, cut out um, the shapes that I did from the sides. The one I have is looks a little like a. That's lovely. A That's good. <laughs> that looks better than what we did first. Okay, I'm gonna open up mine now. So you saw my pattern and um. And so I just cut out from the edges, making sure nothing cuts through and I'm gonna open them up. And then like Maya said, you just have to be very <laughs> careful. Okay, here. So this is what it looks like. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. But you saw the random way that I was um, just, um, doing the, the patterns. So every single one will be different because it just depends on how you feel and what you feel like. And then if you want, even if you just add a cut at the beginning, there will be those extra edges um, all over. So, so these things are very flexible. It's nice seeing all those, you were talking about the hearts and you could see the hearts. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna open mine up as well. Yay, let's see, oh. let's see. All right. So, That's Chris's first one. This is my first one ever. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so there it is. Uh, so this isn't the, this isn't the uh, fancy paper that was kindly donated to us. This is just construction paper. There we go. It looks very nice. Oh, this is, um, do you see there's kind of, it looks like an arrow, these arrows coming in. That's interesting. Cute. Yes. All right, Maya, do you think you're, you're ready to open them up or open it up? It's a bit fragile. She likes to cut out a lot. And that's why <laughs> they are super fragile. Not more fun that way. Oh, I accidentally broke it. That's fine. Yeah, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> that happened to a lot of our early ones. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. <laughs> so you can see how in the middle, like, so that's the bottom, like you can do However, so you can cut out a little hole if you want here. And it'll oh. have a hole in the middle. Yeah, it will become a big hole. Oh, nice. <laughs> and then the yeah. hole can take any shape that you do. One thing I was noticing too is that you can, if you, you could always put it back together and then add cut more. <laughs> so I, I kind of want to have a hole in the center, like of my. Yeah, you can go back and <laughs> cut it. Just don't cut through, otherwise they, they, they do this. Now I have a hole. This is so nice. Um, Kim, and 
I'm wondering if you if you'd <laughs> like to show yours. Sorry to put you on the stop. On the okay, stop. I came up with this. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Very, very nice. <laughs> Just like so regular. So, um, <laughs> what is the word? It, it makes me think, Kim, of like when you drop a pebble in the water and it like is um, the ripples going out. Right. That's a good way to put it. Um, and Genevieve, also on Zoom, I don't know if you want to show yours. I could promote you to panelists. You could just say, um, I'd like to I'd, yeah, so yes in the chat, and then I'll promote you to panelists if you're, if you're game to show yours too. She's super crafty. She is super crafty. <laughs> But I'm not gonna know that it's only if you want to. <laughs> um, and Eliza, Eliza too is also, and we have more on Facebook Live. Which unfortunately, if you're on Facebook Live, then we can't uh, show show yours. But if uh, if anyone else on Zoom would like to to show your yours, just let me know in the chat, and then I can uh, promote you to panelists. Will I post it on Facebook? link then we can check out later yeah right if you're if you wanted to post it on the facebook link you can too um thank you so much maya and Sui. this is, is so fun to make um, and i really appreciate you joining us um here i'll go so i could see both of us um i really appreciate you both uh joining us on rbcm at home kids uh, and doing this special session uh, with us. Um, so with to wish someone um, a happy Lunar New Year, what would you say, Maya? Gonghei fa cai. Say that one more time. Gonghei fa cai. Gonghei fa, fa cai. Mm -hmm. Good enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very I'm, I'm very bad with um, with language. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, Fine. Uh, so other person understands. Yeah, for sure. So um, thank you so much, you two. Thanks everyone for joining out there in Facebook Live land and on Zoom. Um, and and uh, yeah, well, again, uh, face, uh, RBCM at Home Kids happens every Wednesday at 11. Um, we have um, recordings. We've been doing this for um, over almost a year now. So we have recordings on our YouTube page of many, many different sessions. So feel free to, to find some uh, that pique your interest. And um, yeah, and remember to wear red on Friday um, and wish, wish someone um, close to you a, a happy Lunar New Year. And, and please uh, support Chinatown businesses. Yeah, and for sure, like this week and then the weeks after, make sure that you, if you are in Victoria, to go down to, to Chinatown and support uh, business, businesses there. If you're in Vancouver, go to the Chinatown there. Um, and uh, yeah, so support those businesses and support each other. All right, so thanks everyone. And, um, and that's the end of the program. Yeah, have a very good new year.